Welcome back to Gizaka Stockfile Insights. If you've just joined us, we have tackled the importance of membership growth for Stockfiles and the elements of good administration with my resident guest expert, Tabiso Masurubele from Thai Vision Media. Ntate Masurubele, Ika Heng wants their burial society to grow. They want to implement some elements of investment stock files in there as well. Now, besides death being the main differentiator here, what are the other factors that differentiate the two? I think, firstly, it's to complement them with how they're thinking and how they want to move forward. Because we've got quite a few burial societies that want to look uh, away from being just, you know, death merchants. So you have people saying the only benefit that we're going to get is when you die and there's nothing necessarily wrong with that. But it is possible to have your money work for you while you're alive and growing that money. So there definitely are options for Ika Heng to look at what are the options beyond being a burial society to look. In fact, they've already started that process. The process of acquiring assets such as pots, pans, the things that are used at funeral services, they've already started that. So the starting point would be to say, how can they then elevate from what they've started, build on, from that and it would be to look at how they then look at when they're not using the assets that they have are they able to start a business from there as they talk about us so they've already invested in the pots and the equipment that's used for themselves so i'm sure that they don't have we hope that they don't have a funeral that they have to work every weekend in the event that they don't have a funeral that we can, are they able to then start a business with the asset that they have to say, how do we use this asset one and the service? Because we can rent out the assets, but also give the service that we have to use that asset to begin maybe a catering uh, service for funerals and go around and generate revenue from that. And in doing that, they're moving from merely being just a burial society, which involves itself with funerals and death, to something that's generating income for them uh, as they are alive. And then they can watch the growth of that second element of, of their group. Now, earlier in the episode, you were just touching on how sometimes the group goals can change mm. from time to time or after a while. Yeah. But what is the risk of having to expand or grow in this manner for Ika Heng? Doesn't this impact their monthly contributions for members? Not necessarily. So sticking to the point of where you're saying admin, they have to go back to basics to say initially our objective was, you know, involved in bur we're a burial society by and large. That's what we do. So now they have to adjust that to say our constitution has made provision for us to become a stock fell as well, beyond just a burial society. Now what does that entail logistically? It means we used to have a committee, you know, that deals with funeral issues. Now we need to have a committee that deals with the asset that we have. How are we then going to branch and make sure that the administration that we have is able to balance and meet the objectives of our dual objective so dual objective you then have to align your administration and your processes to talk to the duality of what your group wants to do so if you had a committee that deals with the the burial side of things you then look at a committee that deals with the stock file side of things and then you make decisions to say are these two separate entities within one it's almost like walking and chewing if they are these two separate things, we then need two committees. So even if it's the same people who serve on the committees, but there must be a clear understanding that which hat are they wearing for the different responsibilities. So if we are under stockfile responsibilities, we are taking care of that asset. We have to make sure that it generates revenue because that's our mandate for it. And here is what we've traditionally been doing. We have to make sure that premiums are paid on time. And these are decisions that the group would make to say, now we are migrating to becoming a stock file. Does this have an implication on the premium that we've been paying for burial? Do we also have to pay a premium for stock file? And that's a decision that they'd have to make. If they arrive at a decision that says we can't afford it, all of the members, then so be it. That decision is made to say we'll start the business, the stock file, there's no contribution, but we're starting it from the base of having the assets that we have. But the importance, again, is at objective level and making those decisions to say, here's the objective, what are the logistics associated with those different objectives? 
Namazani Masarubele, you touched mm -hmm. on how Ikahing Burial Society basically has started this transitioning process. But I think they did touch on how they wanted to find out if there are other platforms that they can deposit their money other than banks. Um, so can you just touch on that, if it's possible, and what platforms and institutions are available for them? Look, I think this talks to the broad theme of mattress banking, we call it. <laughs> so we discourage mattress banking for a whole host of reasons. I mean, I'll touch on some. It's just a security issue. We're moving towards this thing that's called a cashless society. There are many problems associated with, with cash. So we've read, I mean, in newspapers come end of the year, you know, Coco Spanbani says they were robbed, their money is not there. So all of those emanate from a cash environment. So for us, I think the only institutions that are there, authorized, legal, and permitted to take deposits are banks, you know. The only thing that they have to look at is to look at the different instruments that they have. I think what they raised was an issue of the interest-bearing nature of the account that they're using. So again, it talks to what the objective is. Are they looking for a transactional account or are they looking for an investment account? So sometimes people misunderstand the, 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 the roles of the different instruments that exist within financial institutions. So if you're putting your stock file, you open a stock file, a stock file account and it's a transactional account, it means you're using that account to transact. And so you should be prepared, that's what it's for. So you can't use a transactional account and say, but I'm looking at the interest rate of the transactional account. So you have to be very clear in what your purpose is. So, so for me, the answer to that question is that you have to continue engaging. When it comes to where do you put your money, it's authorized legal FSPs, whether it's a bank, uh, it has to be someone who's defined to do that particular role. So say no to mattresses. No. and step into the future yes please <laughs> as we wrap up today's enlightening discussion it's clear that groups like ikaheng burial society have a significant role to play in the socio-economic well-being of its members and community equally stock files and burial societies are an important pillar of the economic value chain which is why it's essential for business leaders to understand the inner workings of stock files and burial societies at large if your stock file or burial society needs to know more about this broad topic do contact us our details will be on the screen below until next week it's goodbye for now this program was brought to you by thai vision media helping stock files and burial societies reach their goals